Hey, ChemStars, this is Mrs. Vanoy bringing you ChemStar videos. This is uh, 6.1 polar molecules, and, uh, or polar bonds anyway, and you really do need to get your periodic tables. All right, you really need to get those out. The ones that have electronegativity given to you, it's, it's probably the most common uh, periodic table that you've had, you've been given. It's been on multiple uh, quizzes, and, and I know I've given you uh, like a colored one, so... Uh, you find the periodic table that is that we use most often in class, and you really do need that because we need to have electronegativity. So if you need to pause this and get it out, we'll do so. All right, well, hopefully you have it. So what are we going to do? We're going to determine if a bond is a polar covalent bond, a nonpolar covalent. Notice those first two are covalents. That means they're still sharing. Or an ionic bond, where it's a complete give and take based on electronegativity differences. So... Um, this is a better way than just looking at metal, non-metal, uh, to know if it's an ionic or, or covalent. And if it is covalent, then we can further distinguish on, on how well are they sharing. Are they playing nice or are they not playing nice, uh, in other words, okay? So we have some um, key, vocab key vocabulary, polar, non-polar, ionic, electronegativity we already talked about, and then these things called partial charges. They're not a full charge. They are a partial charge, okay, and we're going to talk about those a little bit. So let's talk about bond polarity. Uh, ionic bonds, again, where your cations are don't, going to totally give their electrons to the anions. And uh, in the last section, we said they're going to be your metals and your nonmetals. We're going to learn that that's not always the case. It's usually the case, okay? Uh, covalent bonds differ in terms of how the bonded atoms uh, share the electrons. Not every um, atom are going to share equally, all right? Some atoms love electrons more than others, and so that would be an unequal sharing, okay? So fluorine, we learned, uh, had the highest electronegativity value, so it's going to um, love those electrons the most, and those electrons are going to, if they're not totally given to the fluorine, they're going to be closer to the fluorine, all right? And that's the difference between polar and nonpolar. So, a nonpolar covalent bond is the bonding electrons that are shared equally by the bonded atoms. So they have um, elements that have pretty similar, if not exactly the same, electronegativities. Okay? A polar covalent bond is a bond atoms that have an unequal attraction for the shared. And that's what I was referring to earlier with fluorine. Fluorine is going to win that battle. And those electrons are going to be physically closer uh, to... Um, the fluorine or whichever one uh, than the other, okay? So let's go down to the next section, and there is a typo uh, here that I, we need to fix, okay? Okay, so how do you know if a bond is truly ionic or covalent? It, notice it says here, in general. So again, we're talking about a rule of thumb. This doesn't work 100% of the time. And how do you know exactly is it ionic or covalent what you'd have to do is that you would have to melt the solid don't put it in water melt the solid and see if it actually conducts electricity or not um, if it does conduct electricity from a, this molten state not a dissolved state but the molten so the solid is you know melting into a liquid if that liquid conducts electricity it's ionic if it does not it's covalent and that is the best best way to determine. Now, we're not going to do that, okay? So what can we do without going into the lab? We look at the electronegativity values, okay? So if it's ionic, you're going to subtract. Remember I told you that difference meant subtract. You do that, you know, in math class, you find the difference. Well, you do that here too. So you subtract. You always want to subtract so you get a positive number. And if it's ionic, it's going to be uh, uh, bigger than 1.7, okay? So uh, if you look over here, you can see the percent um, ionic character. And here's that 1.7. So if it's up here, the, the biggest extreme would be a 3.3. .3. So that's if you take... Um, uh, fluorine minus francium, all right, you'll get a 3.3. .3. That's a pure ionic state. So even down here, you have um, ionic at 1.7. Now, here is the typo I want you to fix. So a polar covalent is uh, between 0.5 and 1.7. does not include 0 0.4, okay? And these are going to be your nonmetals not close to each other on the periodic table. So can you please, 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 uh, change this for me, all right? And then a nonpolar covalent, cross out, here, I'll do it for you, cross out the uh, 
three. All right, we're gonna oops, we're gonna cross out that point three. I'm gonna try to cross out that point three. Here we go. All right, and it's gonna be point four. So I'm gonna cross this out too. All right, and we're gonna cross this out. Um, so we want it to be point four and less. All right, and how do I know this? Um, because organic chemistry is based on the fact that the carbon and hydrogen bond is uh, zero point four. Okay, so I know in my heart of hearts that your uh, gasoline is nonpolar, uh, and that difference is a 0 0.4. So that's a typo, and I hope you fix that. Okay, trust me that what was written initially is wrong, and what I've given you is correct. Okay, all right, so how do we do this? Let's scroll down and see how we work this. All right, so let's look at this example of the H and BR. So what do I need to do? Um, I need to look up, first of all, on your periodic table and find hydrogen and what is its electronegativity. So go ahead and look at uh, your hydrogen and tell me what you get. I got 2.1. All right, find bromine now. And what did you get with bromine? Look it up and what do you get? I got 2.8. So now what? Take the electronegative difference, subtract. You always want a positive number. So don't take 2.1 minus 2.8. You get negative 0.7. Make it so you always get a positive number. And what do you get? I got 0 0.7. I hope you did too. So now look up here. All right. Look at the top. And what does that give you? 0.7. Well, there should be no doubt. It's going to be polar covalent. All right. So it's going to be polar covalent. Let me scroll back down again. Okay, and so now what? Here's this. And now we have something called deltas if polar. Well, it is polar covalent, so I have to put some deltas in there. Okay, so here is what you need to do is like rewrite your H and your BR. And now what you do is you say, okay, which one loved the electrons more? Well, look over here again. Which one loved the electrons more? Oh, which has a higher number. That's what that number means, all right? Well, bromine has the bigger number. So what does that mean? That the hydrogen and the bromine are not sharing equally. They're not playing nice, all right? Bromine is taking its, its larger share, if you will, of those electrons. Uh, what that truly means is that those electrons are physically closer to the bromine than the hydrogen. So how does that, what do I mean about these deltas then? Remember they meant partial positive and partial negative. Well, if the bromine is loving those electrons more and those electrons are closer to the bromine well what's the charge of an electron well, our electrons are negative so those electrons are closer to the bromine so the bromine takes on a partial negative state so i put a little partial negative right there all right because those electrons which are negative are physically closer to those bromines than the hydrogen so if the bromine is partially negative then the hydrogen is partially positive so what does that mean for you? Whichever, if it's polar, only deltas if polar. If it's nonpolar ionic, you don't do this, all right? But if it's polar, all right, the one with a higher electronegativity value is going to be the partial negative. The one with a lower electronegativity will be your partially positive. So let's try the next one. All right, what's my first step? I need to look up the electronegativities of potassium and chlorine. Why don't you go do that and write them down? All right, I got 0 0.9 for potassium and 3.0 for chlorine. So subtract, so you get a positive number, and I get what? What do you think I get? You say 2.1? You're right. All right, so go scroll back up again, and what's 2.1? Whoops, I didn't mean to do that one. Scroll up this way. There we go. So what's 2.1? It's, oops, it's definitely greater than 1.7. All right, so um, what's that mean? It's ionic. Do I need to do any of this stuff? No, why not? It says deltas if polar. This is ionic. You don't have to do it. So let's go to the next one. Okay, what's my first step? Look it up. Go ahead and do that. I got carbon is 2.5 and oxygen is what? 3.5. All right. Notice that action is the second largest electronegative element. All right. Um, subtract. What do you get? I don't know about you, but I can do that in my head. 1.0. All right. So now let's scroll up 
And what do you get if it's 1.0? It is between 0.5 and 1.7. So what does that mean? It is or covalent. Let's go down a little bit more. Row, row. All right, so it's polar covalent. It's within that, that range, isn't it? So what do I have to do? Deltas if polar. Well, it is polar. So I need to do this. And which one loves electrons more? The carbon at 2.5 or the oxygen at 3.5? Well, I think it is the oxygen at 3.5. So it's partially negative. Therefore, the carbon is partially positive. Let's do one more together, and then I want you to do some more on your own. Okay, so let's do the next one. All right, so what do you do first? Go for it. All right, whoops, I looked up chlorine and fluorine, and chlorine is 3.0, and fluorine is 4.0. Okay, subtract, what do you get? Same, wow, same as before. So what is it? I bet it's polar covalent, isn't it? So now what? This is what you need to worry about. Polar or deltas if polar. Well, it is. All right. So that's when you rewrite your chlorine, your fluorine. Which one loves it more? The one with a high electronegativity. So your fluorine gets your partially negative and your chlorine gets your partially positive. Let me just kind of warn you. Chlorine is usually the partial negative one. But if it's ever up against oxygen or fluorine, it's going to be the partial positive. Right? Anything else will be your, your um, partial negative. Okay. So at this point, I want you to work on the rest of these. So pause this. And if and only if you are done, then come back. All right. All right, how'd you do? Hopefully you got it. So I have lithium and oxygen. Lithium's at 1.0 and oxygen's at 3.5. So it's it's 2.5 and that's clearly ionic. So notice I didn't do anything. What about the next one? Bromine, bromine. Oh, we haven't had one of these yet. What's 2.8 minus 2.8? Uh, zero. All right, so if it's zero, did you scroll up here? That's nonpolar covalent. All right, and again, I don't have to do anything. Why not? Because they're sharing equally. Those electrons are smack dab in the middle. Um, so one doesn't love those electrons more. They're not closer to anything else. So it's nonpolar. There are no deltas, okay? What about the next one? This is what I was telling you about earlier. I know, because I teach organic chemistry, that hydrogen and carbon are nonpolar. That's why we had to fix that up ahead. So you subtract to get 0 0.4, which is definitely nonpolar covalent, okay? And then here's our last one. And notice this is a, a little bit different. Hang on a second. We got a 3.0 and a 2.1. I got 0.9 polar covalent. And notice why it was a little bit different, because the nitrogen is written first, and it's your partial negative, and the hydrogen's your partial positive. So don't think that it's always the, the second one written will always be your partial negative. That's not correct. It's the one with the highest electronegativity value will be the one with the partial negative. Okay, well, that's it for this section. So uh, don't wait to be great. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.